the first decision that you must make in order to excel in life to live an uncommon life and an uncommon destiny is the decision to know the Lord and to be exceptional in your spiritual life write it down please in order of priority the decision to know the Lord and the decision to be exceptional as far as your spiritual life is concerned Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 13. Here's what the prophet said. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 13. Did I get that right? Help me. I'm looking for the scripture. Let not the wise man. Is it 12? Check for me please. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Verse 12, thank you. No. Please search it for me. Huh? Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Huh? Beautiful. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man, look up please, glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Now 24. Let's read together. 1, 2, read 24. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. Stop there. That the real glory of the believer in this kingdom is that you understand God and you know God. Do you know, we live in a world where if a young man comes and tells you I'm a graduate, I had first class, but I hate Jesus Christ. I hate anything God, but I'm a serious person. You say, that's all right. At least you are educated. It's just that you are not serious with God. And we sweep it under the carpet. We have downplayed the issue of spirituality and left it to church and pastors. The Bible says, listen carefully that let not the wise man glory in his strength the rich man and all of that that him that glories he should glory in the fact that he knows the lord john chapter 17 and verse 3 jesus is praying and here's what he said john 17 and verse 3 he says this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true god and jesus whom thou hast sent. There are many believers who love the fruits of a healthy relationship with Jesus but are not willing to commit themselves in truth. There are people who have made up their minds that they will not be serious with God. In fact, they frown at anything that drives them into a deeper relationship. The moment you mention fasting, they frown prayer five minutes they say it's enough god is not deaf you see all these kinds of things are the indices that make for a weak and beggarly spiritual life and it is dangerous because you raise your children spiritually to honor your conviction god if you do not respect god and god does not seem like a big deal to you it is impossible to raise a mighty man under god being a lazy man spiritually yourself are we together? You will only raise your children to reflect your convictions about God. Every arm robber came from a family. Is that true? Every terrorist and every troublemaker disturbing society today came from a family. And respectfully speaking, most of them, the disaster in a nation starts within a region. The disaster within a region starts within a family. The disaster within a family starts within an individual who neglected his role. Chances are excellent that if you do not show your child the way of the Lord, the devil will escort him to another group of careless individuals and they will build that strong momentum and he will begin to grow and evolve until he becomes one who will cause mayhem to society. Every national problem was first a regional problem. Every regional problem was first a community problem. 
every community problem was first a family problem and every family problem most family problems are traceable to the neglect of someone the decision to know the Lord and to be serious spiritually During the pandemic last year, most all churches, I think, there was a compulsory, how many months? Two or three months break. Do you know that two or three months break, there were people who by the time they called back, they needed to dig them from a spiritual hole and bring them out to say start with God afresh because just three months of lack of pastoral assistance plunge many people into a realm that is almost as if they never knew Jesus Christ. Three months. Remember the disciples when they walked with Jesus. We will follow you, they said. Jesus kept looking at them, especially Peter. As soon as Judas came to kiss Jesus, he landed in trouble. You see how they all left? The only person that stood with Jesus at the cross was John the Beloved. Where were all the people who enjoyed his meal? The recipients of his miracle, the five loaves and two fish. Where were the people he healed? Listen to me. If you want to live a life of excellence spiritually, you must commit yourself to loving the Lord. There are many people who open their Bibles on Sundays and they don't open it again till another Sunday. Prayer, except it is emergency. Otherwise, God, let your mercy just speak. This is the year that you will make up your mind to be systemic about your spiritual growth. Most of us grew up and saw our parents. Some of them were not filled with the Holy Ghost. They could not pray in tongues, but as soon as they woke up the first thing, their Bibles were at their side. Is that true? You saw that happen, that ritual for over 25 years. It may be 10 minutes of devotion, but they, it did not fail. We must return back and discipline ourselves to take the issue of our spiritual life seriously. When someone is not spiritual as an individual, when he becomes a worker in church, he will transfer his unseriousness spiritually to that department. It's as simple and honest as that. Is that true? If an unserious man meets an unserious woman, even if they are joined in church, they will all take their different versions of spiritual unseriousness. And that, that home will be, it will be a hub for demons and yokes and curses and all kinds of things. And many of us, sincerely speaking, we come from backgrounds not to scare you, but by default, there are already yokes and covenants waiting for your unseriousness to play out. God is, your destiny and that of your children is at the mercy of your spiritual growth. Listen. You run based on what is pursuing you. If a fowl is pursuing you, can a chicken is pursuing me, I can run. But if a lion is pursuing you, there are many of us, you are yet to examine what is really pursuing you. You heard that your grandfather served idols and died. Your grandmother served idols and died. And they said the first male, which is you, should be the person who will be the next priest. Now you said it's not my business. And you see what your life is becoming. It takes high level spirituality. To break free in experience from those things. Please take serious what I'm telling you. There are people there is no explanation to their failure. Except that there are yokes of darkness. That try to tie them down. The decision. To be spiritual. What happens as a father when your child tells you, I had a dream. I've been seeing dreams of graves. He said, that's all right. It's, I think you are watching a bad movie. You see that? Whereas this child is communicating something. Imagine if Samuel were not spiritual. If Eli were not spiritual. Yes, even though his eyes were getting dim, he was discerning enough. When Samuel came and met him and said, there is, a, there is something happening to me. I'm hearing your voice. He said, uh-huh. You mentor based on your growth. You lead based on your growth. Let me challenge especially the gentlemen in this church and the men in this church. 
your family will be a reflection of the level of spiritual dexterity you have or otherwise no matter what else you have if it is minus god you're on your way to disaster the decision to know god and to be serious spiritually a woman once reported her husband that he never calls for prayer they tried in the morning it didn't work they tried in the night it didn't work but anytime there's trouble he can call anybody anytime even in the afternoon and gather the whole family and say they must pray I don't know about you but I am where I am today by the grace and the mercy of God I would rather lose every other thing but not his presence we live in a wicked world when you leave Jesus Christ you will find out that every other thing you've held on to is transient men will leave you in a heartbeat systems will leave you in a heartbeat your job will throw you out if they have an alternative you better hold on to that friend that's ticket closer than a brother don't let men make jesus christ look like an outdated issue in your life your phone rings with a christian song you quickly off it because you don't want to fall your hand if all i have is jesus i've got something more than gold i will tell it to my world jesus is more than if all i have is jesus i've got something more than gold oh, i will tell it to, to the world jesus is more than gold i truly believe there are people here and outside and those following you're saying apostle this jesus thing but i i want to try it's not about trying it's about genuinely submitting yourself to see the value listen if i ask you sit down here sir and i don't tell you why even when you are tired you are not motivated to keep sitting but if i tell you there is a lion close to you and your safety is to sit down there your body cannot tell you you are tired the revelation of what is behind you the bible says the name of the lord is a strong tower it says the righteous run it to it and they are saved my dear people, our world is a wicked world. Don't say I'm a celebrity. Everybody loves me. Get into a situation where you need help. That's when you will understand. You will understand the, the, the self-centeredness of men. There is one who can love you just as you are. Jesus. The decision to know God. It means the decision to study your Bible. You get too big to study your Bible or too busy to study your Bible, you're in trouble. It's an attack. Too busy to pray. Too busy to learn the ways of God. Your pastor would teach and the Holy Spirit would tell you you need to listen to that message. In that message is the security of the next five years of your life. But then the devil occupies us with all kinds of things. Hear me. Except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city he said the watchmen watch it but in vain when i started out in life and ministry there were people who were running you would think after one year they will not give room for ministry again sometimes i i challenged a few of them and i said calm down the way you are going about ministry you will fail you don't understand this is how this thing is done some of them today i'm not sure they are even in christ sincerely you see ba when you walk with god your life looks deceptively slow keep moving with him god does not rush people he gives speed there is a difference between speed and hurry god builds you for a long time you will, you will look at yourself using the indices of men and feel stupid for being serious with God. I've been a worker in this church for four years. Lord, it looks like nothing is happening. Yet you did not know that in prophecy 2022 was the year that God will lift you all of a sudden. And this is what people will say, where did he come from? There is nobody who comes from nowhere. Just because you are not there during the time of training does not mean the person was not trained. 
there are many of you I sense in my spirit that you have committed your heart to serve God you have served in this church people have laughed at you you've even felt stupid serving God I came here to prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus who sent me I decree unto you may this be your season of appearance your life will be a testament that it pays to serve Jesus please sit down the decision to know the Lord and the decision to excel spiritually the first speak the first index for measuring growth and and um, a life of meaning from scripture is the health of your spiritual life hallelujah praise the name of the Lord the health of your spiritual life number two I'm seeing something I saw yesterday while I was preaching at the mainland I saw yesterday I prophesied it and the Lord is telling me to speak it here too the Lord told me that there was a a lady or someone yesterday her mother has been praying because of what God showed her, the mother at birth that that person was going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of the Lord and the Lord is asking me to declare that same word I just saw light and there are people God is going to begin to work on you listen there is a training in the spirit what God is making out of you even you you do not know you think that you are just an ordinary person who is rising but there is a dealing is why God has been exempting you from what others are enjoying help them please in the name of Jesus I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead by reason of this encounter tonight may the grace for your destiny the grace that has been building you in the secret when no one has seen the grace that has prohibited you when you should travel it says stay when others are moving it says stay you don't even understand where God is going with you I'm interpreting prophecy for you you are not wasting your time there is a making you have decided to work with God When you walk with God, your life is very strange. Read John 15. Jesus was speaking. He said, the wind bloweth. You can't tell where it's going or where it's coming. I don't know one person who has really walked with God and understood everything about the journey. It is not the God of the Bible. There will be gaps in your walk with God. The mission is follow me. It will take faith. God will not tell you everything and everywhere. Just follow. Follow. Be stupid enough to follow. Some of us have gotten here today by the privilege of blind followership. Lord, I don't know where I'm going, but I know that every time my heart is overwhelmed, ah, I will be still and know you, my God. My soul be still and know you, my God. That I will be still My soul be still know you, my God. That, that life from state. You're serving God that is responsible for where you are. Can I tell you this? We live in a society that finds joy in mocking God. They will look at you and say, look at your life. Be honest with yourself. And you stand in front of a mirror and say, God, look what you've made out of my life. You've made misery out of my life. I had a useful life. I had a good job. When I was an unbeliever, I was fine. Now you brought me to this church and all I can say is I'm a worker. Hold on. There is something he's doing. I can tell you, there is something he's doing. When God is done with you, like a trophy, when he lifts you to the nations, if you ever forget this man, Look at the life of the person talking with you. I will be still. See, 
when God lifts you there is nothing man can do you are lifted you are lifted it's as simple as that hear me I'm speaking because maybe there is a man of God here in the making and you are wondering God this is our thing I don't am you are asking me to pray you are asking me to fast where are we going and God says just continue what do I do with these prophetic things I'm seeing just continue the training oh Esther continue there is the palace calling you but God will not tell you you are going to the palace he will train you some of you God has refused to tell you where he's taking you so that you will not be distracted just focus on the training but I can assure you that the thoughts that he thinks towards you they are thought of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end my soul be still and know you are God I will be still and know you Please sit down. Can you imagine that? There, just help those under the anointing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Elizabeth, do not cry about your lack of pregnancy. John is coming. John is not an ordinary child. John is a unique prophet. When you know this, let me teach you something, people of God. You will never judge people by what they are going through. You do not know the kind of dealing God is submitting them through. So you find out someone gets married and no child day one, no child two years. Don't be quick to point fingers. You do not know what God is taking away from their life before that child arrives. Hmm. Has God spoken to someone already? You must make up your mind don't say i'm in lagos i'm busy don't say i have five children in the beginning god restore that protocol to your life not in the beginning a job the person talking to you is not stupid i know that you need resources to move i know you have children hey anything god does not give you let no man claim he can give you please one uncle can say meet me by february and you will die by the end of january for someone god is waking you right now he's saying the way you are ignoring god you are you are programming yourself and your children to disaster apostle but i'm a worker that's not what i'm asking you i'm not asking you if you're a worker many people were close to jesus some made money out of him some used him for influence. Only a few were changed by that relationship. Your proximity around where God is does not mean you are transformed. Years ago, the Lord told me something. He said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. And I stand before the God of heaven to tell you if there is anything you have seen that is worth giving God glory in the life of this man, it is a product of what God can do when he finds men who give him everything. Everything. You don't give God your money and keep your brain. You give everything. You're my treasure my priority don't be ashamed of your tears who can compare to you for great is the measure of your royalty oh morning star you truly are pastor mildred when i started my walk with god I was not looking for ministry. I was not looking for fame. I didn't even come from a background that would easily give me that kind of result. I loved him with my heart and my all. I would give up ministry a thousand times to maintain that relationship. Apostle nonsense. Preacher nonsense. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love 
your presence I love I love I love you Jesus I love I love I'm staying here because God is doing something in the life of someone that after this conference and this night you are going to make up your mind and say that's it that is it that is it it is oh I am ready I am ready to walk with Jesus genuinely whoever told you he will make you a failure whoever told you that when you serve him you will you will sweep the floors of life you don't know him find out from scripture he carried an ordinary lady called Hastasa and made her queen find out what he made with ordinary people I have made up my mind that my everything belongs to him. It is true. My charge for you, we have six wherever I stop. I need to drum this because sincerely for most people, this is why you are not excelling. We live in a sociological context that makes God look like an interruption to civilization. Lord, I want to make it. Are you not aware? Huh. When people clap and credit their results to their efforts, other people like us back down and we say, Lord, I will be foolish and stupid to join them lifting my hands. No. My life is a testament of what God can do. Where God can take another person's prayer point and give the one he loves. Learn what I'm sharing with you today. You are a man of God. Yeah, forget about ministry and settle down with God. Businessman is not just by running up and down. Believe me, the person talking to you is not stupid. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of his wings. Please take God seriously in 2022. Anybody who comes around your life wanting your hand in marriage or wanting anything and is not serious with God, there is nothing to pray about. The prayer is already answered. Are we together? Straight to the point. But I can tell you, if it is the God of heaven, give him your everything and watch what he does with your life. Number two, let's hurry up. The second decision you must make if you want to live an excelling life. Remember what we're discussing, choose life. The first has to do with your spiritual growth, your knowledge of God. The second, what is the second decision you need to make? The decision to contend for a superior belief system. The decision to be transformed in other words. Write it down please. The decision to walk on your mind. Immediately you sort the issue of your spiritual life. The next part of call is not your hands, it's your mind. The decision to contend for superior belief systems. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, the Bible did not say so he will become. So he is. As he thinketh in his heart, that means your physical reality will inevitably be a report card, an attestation of your level of mental transformation. Now, this is the balance because most times haven't, haven't stressed the issue of godliness and loving God. There is a mistake that is being made in church because we downplay also the place of mental transformation. So we have so many people who love the Lord, 
but continue to make mediocre decisions that reflect that base thinking you must transit in your mind even jesus philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 the bible says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus he did not just because he was the son of god there was a belief system that he your perspectives your viewpoint your thinking you can never rise above and beyond your belief system your life will be a messless reflection of your belief system mediocrity is a life that comes in honor to a particular belief system poverty is the resultant effect of a particular belief system failure and lack of influence is it comes in honor all of the ills that we find come in honor here's what the bible says that these signs shall follow them that believe that means i don't need to go into your mind to know what you believe i look at the sign following you because the bible says the sign will come in honor to what you believe so if i see failure and poverty and bitterness and anger they are coming in honor to what you believe you don't drive them by saying leave me you change what you believe and they will change are we together you must contend for renewal and transformation believers hear me scattered in this beautiful hall and outside and even following online are people who have come from different parts of this nation and around the world yoruba Igbo, northern and south south and all of that and let me tell you this i'm sure that your pastors are, are experts in that area and so i'm not even going to delve into it that our mindsets are shaped by the following factors number one culture culture number two your past experiences number three your circle of friends and your influence all of these are shapers of your mindset chances are excellent respectfully speaking that if you came from say a polygamous family you will not be too far from things like jealousy and selfishness and envy imagine that you become a worker in church and a leader in church still carrying that egypt with you you will turn that church to look like the house you are coming from you will first create a party for yourself and fight any other person who is not in your group it doesn't mean you are bad you are a victim of a mental construct that came from your past there are people for instance who have suffered for everything they ever had in life 10 years to finish primary school eight years to finish a four-year course when you teach on favor they look at you and say you are joking let's share the grace you are talking nonsense there if you teach on possibilities they will hear but favor no it has not been captured in my experience the house of god is supposed to be like a threshing floor where you you open up your mindset to to that 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 editing by the spirit of god it says in romans chapter 12 and verse 2 it says and be ye be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind many believers are saved but they cannot move past the gate of salvation because their mindsets do not allow for god to use them the way he intends to use there are many preachers who remain small and they think their smallness is a reflection of god's inability your mindset is like the container that will receive that jar of oil remember the story of the the shunammite woman the problem was never the oil it was that the vessel was small the prophet gave her counsel go and borrow vessel he said borrow not a few you don't need to borrow oil the oil will always look like the vessel carrying it let me challenge someone therefore that this is the year you will go back to buying books buy the truth and sell it not buy there are disciplines you have to give yourself there are videos you must watch if not your eyes will not see sleep discipline yourself tear down some negative pictures in your room that continue to spell evil and war and all of those kinds of things i am very sensitive to atmosphere 
there are things you will never find around me because there are multitudes that are depending on the decisions that I take and it is my responsibility under God to create the atmosphere that makes creativity and growth possible for me I invest in my atmosphere are you learning you're staying with neighbors that are causing you trouble at the end of this meeting we'll release a grace for you to get out of that place and look for a place where you can you can roll on the floor in peace and serve God and anybody who comes under your roof and doesn't behave well send them away in peace don't don't say well, the, the Bible says no 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 God is not stupid there is a protocol don't bring somebody into your house who does not give you peace the Bible says the Lord himself will give you peace always by all means. There are many believers who continue to trap themselves and they don't create that atmosphere that allows for creativity because they ship all kinds of troublemakers around their lives in the name of relatives, in the name of all kinds of people. You don't have to fight them. Let them go in peace. If you are under my roof, you must serve my God and subscribe to the modus operandi you met. You can't bring your rules into my house. No. Are we learning? The decision to contend for superior beliefs. There are some of you, your businesses should not be at that level except that you have not seen further because it is as far as your eyes can see that it is given to you not as far as it is available the one your eye sees is what you are, you are you are given make up your mind that this is the year you will expand beyond the limitations of culture beyond the limitations don't say i am from so 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 no if you came from a poor family do not bring a poor family out of you if you came from a weak family do not bring a weak family out of you be the bridge between the old and the new i made up my mind it was a decision that every men mental construct i will need to have to allow me excel at a global level god has done his part by calling me and anointing me and granting me access to the holy spirit there is the labor dimension of faith as a commitment that you believe in what god has called you to do if he has anointed me to speak to kings and to nations and to nobles I must pay the price to build the mental capacity that befits that realm don't sit down and just wish and hope and wish and hope and wish and hope and then remain mediocre no make up your mind that you will not be in any atmosphere on this earth and feel ashamed no it is a commitment businessman that even if you stand before Bill Gates you will only be inspired not intimidated no no the difference between you and anybody you admire is number one the level and quality of information they have number two the level of relationships that they have that support that mental transition and then number three the level of engracing upon them everybody you ad you admire you can even surpass if you are willing to make the decision to work on your mind your mind can go where your body is not yet qualified to go your mind does not need a visa your mind can travel with the holy spirit and tap into infinite possibilities i was preparing for ministry when i was in one room don't wait for anybody to come and invite you and bless you from where you are lift up your eyes you don't need a visa to lift up your eyes and now technology has made it easy with the comfort of your phone you can access materials that expand your thinking lay your hands on your head and declare expansion that this year my mind expand expand you are praying my mind expand in the name of jesus expand in ministry expand in business for the sake of his majesty a small and a mediocre life I'm not part of you again. I make a decision in the name of Jesus. Not a carnal decision. Not a sensual decision. A spiritual decision. The discipline to submit my mind to knowledge. The discipline to submit my mind to learning. I will learn. I will unlearn. I will relearn. I will learn. I will unlearn. I will relearn. In the name of Jesus. Local champion living. Be far from my life. 
I am ready to attain a global scale in the name of Jesus hallelujah listen to me you see if you don't rise to a global scale you will spend your life in pain and jealousy and comparison you will never see traffic in the air there is enough room no matter how big the plane is traffic is only when you're on land rise to a level where everyone is a champion this petty jealousy petty fighting petty pointing fingers there is a realm that you can rise above it are you learning make that decision today apostle i have only ten thousand you don't need clothes go and buy materials make up your mind that there is no fake life don't fake what can be real invest in your mind i have ten thousand i will not pretend i know by faith i have everything in christ but i will use that ten thousand and buy data and sit down and begin to invest lord i know that the food my mother did not eat in her youth she will eat it before she sees you shalika paru katasia you buy a notebook and you are writing and heaven is supervising the things you're doing sooner or later your current level will run away from you and the new that you are embracing with your transformation will come to you can i tell you success is not what you pursue success is what you attract by your becoming your becoming is greater than your doing learn this business people learn this it is not in doing it is your becoming the people that do know their god they shall be then they shall do our focus is on doing what do i do to prosper no it's what do i become you do from a standpoint of your becoming your mindset is greater than your activity please do not forget this stay and build yourself stay and work on yourself be strict on yourself when you watch people who run the hundred meters dash do you know they don't train them with hundred meters go and ask any coach you can't train somebody to run on hundred meters with hundred meters you can do 150 or 200 so his mind is already fixed on 150 so that even when he reaches 100 he has to stop himself the mind says continue you were not trained with this small a distance so stretch yourself so that even when you have crossed the global scale your mind is still pushing you it is when you stand with your contemporaries you see the excellency of your transformation please make up your mind that you will drive shame through diligence drive shame far from your life Number three, are you learning? Hmm. What is the third decision you must make for an excelling life? Number three, the decision to discover and fulfill your assignment. That is the third destiny decision that you must make here. The decision to discover and fulfill your assignment. Let me hurry up so that we conserve time john chapter 4 and verse 34 john 4 and verse 34 jesus said unto them my meat that means my satisfaction comes from doing the will of him that sent me david's christian center and to finish his work Dr. Miles Munro of Blessed Memory will always say that the wealthiest place is not the gold mines in South Africa and Congo, DRC and all of these places, not even the oil mines in Nigeria and the Middle East. That the wealthiest place is the symmetry where dreams were never actualized, books that should have been written that were never written. And his goal was that he would die empty. And even in death, he cheated death. You must make up your mind that this is the year you will stop living a purposeless life. Where someone calls you in the morning and says, Bros, what is for today? Say, I'm just sitting down. And say, can you come? And that, that's what defines your day. Purpose-driven people 
almost need prayer to sleep because there is something consuming them there's no distraction many of you got into trouble because of idleness there is a way you can be so busy even the devil will wait for you because your level of focus and determination is such that nothing will bend your focus vision gives your life focus you are busy but not doing many things very busy if you find yourself doing many things it's a sign that you've not found your place in life you should be busy but not doing many things are you learning john chapter 9 and verse 4 john chapter 9 and verse 4 jesus said unto them he said i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day look up please there is timing to your assignment not every time is convenient imagine a man who discovers purpose at 80 chances are excellent that that man may not do so much because the energy the relationships his colleagues may have been long dead so all the things that support his feeling his assignment are almost not there the night cometh when no man can walk again today we are seated here because pastor kingsley and his dear wife found their place in god's agenda and we are all recipients and beneficiaries of their purposefulness make up your mind that you are not going to go and see him without giving out what he put within you to your generation it was a decision that i made many years ago and i'm grateful to god that i made that decision hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 lo i come in the volume of the book 10 7 hebrews 10 7 lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will someone after this after the church conference you should go and start your own retreat your own three-day retreat lock yourself somewhere and flog it out with destiny someone calls you and tell them please call me after three days there's something i need to sort lord i'm tired of escorting people i'm tired of acting like i know where i'm going because you see your honor is in the discovery of your place a bird does not struggle in the air but if the bird enters sea he will struggle there many of you you are struggling as though god did not call and anoint and bless you because you have not found your place the decision to discover and fulfill your assignment i made up my mind that i was not going to spend my life doing so many things that which god has called me to do i will do with all my heart hallelujah all my days on earth i will await the moment that i see you face to face nothing in this world can satisfy jesus you're the cup that will run by listen your honor is in your call your prosperity is in your call your relevance is in your call brother sister the spirit of god is speaking to you this is not just a preacher speaking you will live your life in jealousy and pain and anger this man was my classmate this one was this so what he was just lucky when you find your place you can celebrate others because there is security in your place. When you see people who are always pointing fingers and always speaking negatively to others, search well. They are gallivanting around the corridors of destiny. They have not found them their place. When you see others who celebrate people and can appreciate it, it's because they have found security in their place. And let me tell you this destiny is like a relay that means if god desired that i run with my purpose and hand it to this man and he hands it to this man that means if i refuse to leave purpose i'm punishing these people 
God is too merciful to allow them suffer for my carelessness. He will put a replacement to do that work. This is what is happening to many people. You can look at someone and say, but this is my assignment. Another person had to take it because for every time you delay, there are multitudes suffering. And God loves you, but he loves them too. He will not submit people in pain because you have refused to rise. If I did not rise as a man of God, God loves me, but he will have to raise somebody who will bridge it. The refusal to discover and find your place can cost you your bishopric. He said, his bishopric let another take. Ah, God, don't replace me. I'm ever available. Ever available. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me. Whatever you want to say Lord you can say through me whoever you want to lift Lord you can lift do not live the kind of life where you see someone doing what you know this is your assignment when God finds out that you are careless over your assignment, he will look for someone who is faithfully doing his and has increased capacity. He will honor him and add your assignment to him. This is why you find out that some people start ministry and life not intending to do certain things. But because God searches for available vessels and they are not there, he comes to them and says, can I add this to you? I have seen that your stamina can take this. And you say, Lord, I love you. Bring it on. He will multiply their honor and still grant them that grace. Someone can start the ministry as an evangelist. But the prophet that God desired to raise is careless, not serious. When he should be born again, he's not born again. Filled with the Holy Spirit, he's still arguing about the Holy Spirit. When will you start prophesying to people? God will raise that evangelist who is available. The evangelist is going through the discipline of a prophet. God will add that prophetic to that man. You find out for five years he started with evangelism. But right now he has switched even to the prophetic. Because God intends for his agenda to advance. And if you become an interruption to his agenda, believe me, he loves you. But he will find the replacement. This is one thing I know about God. When you know you will be serious with God, there is nobody who is indispensable. No, sir. No, sir. Don't say God lacks men. There are men who don't make the mistake of Elijah to say I'm the only one. There are 7,000 others. David Christian Center, if God has given you the privilege to be a head of department, to lead a unit, do not ever let it get to you that I am the only one. It is just by meritocracy. No, sir. Because God can pick ordinary people and place something on their lives and grant them the grace to excel. Are we learning? Very quickly. The next decision that you have to make is the decision to be healthy and to be physically strong. You will think this is a simple decision till you die. 